Yo, what's going on everybody? Nature Boy here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having an amazing week. And today I have an analysis video to bring to you guys. So today's video, we are going to be talking about the problems with Big Mom and her character fundamentally. Now, if you've seen my previous video where I titled it The Problem with the Useless Kid, then you understand what this video is about and you understand how the dynamics will go in this video. Because it's basically the same thing as that video, but with Big Mom instead, which personally I think has a lot more problems than even Kid. And we're gonna dive into each and every one of those problems in depth today. So we're gonna get right into it. We're not gonna waste any time. So I'm going to divide this into three major problems and with each one I'm gonna get into detail and discuss my issues with them. So the first major problem with Big Mom is she failed to live up to the standard of Yonko set by her peers. Now, not only was this set by her peers, but I do want to mention this was set with her own portrayal prior to us actually seeing her in combat and fully active in the story. So let's get into this. So the Yonko system, as we know, has been introduced to us ever since the post and his lobby arc when Garp met up with the Straw Hats and was talking to Luffy. And ever since then, from that moment on, it's been nothing but hype, hype, hype in terms of portrayal when it comes to the Yonko. We are told that they are the top of the top of the top. Higher than everyone else in the story, they are the pinnacle. Not only this, but in the beginning, all the way up until now, one thing that Oda has consistently mentioned to us all is that One Piece, the story itself, has always been about Luffy, our main character, surpassing the Yonko to become Pirate King. Not surpassing the Admirals, not surpassing the World Government, not surpassing the Warlords, no, surpassing the Yonko. So they have always been hyped up to be the biggest obstacles in Luffy's path to becoming the Pirate King. They have constantly gotten amazing portrayal throughout the story top tier portrayal above all else and let's take a look at Marine Ford and Marine Ford was the first time that we truly got to see a Yonko in action and what did we see we saw Whitebeard at Marine Ford 72 years old basically on life support before coming sick old man hearts he had heart attacks on a regular basis he was unable to go all out with his devil fruit due to uh, collateral damage where he would suffer casualties on his own side and he was there to save Ace. So he couldn't even go all out with his devil fruit and just plummet the island altogether. So we saw a Yonko with all of these disadvantages and he absolutely destroyed everything. I'm not, he was not, he was not the strongest person ever at that time, maybe, if you want to argue that. However, what he showed us at Marine Ford, you have to admit, set an incredible, incredible high standard for the Yonko that we're going to fight in the future after what we saw from him. Because with defeats with Whitebeard at Marine Ford, I don't think I was the only one who was taken aback and thought, if this is what an old, dying Yonko can do with a heart attack in his final moments of life, Imagine what these other Yonkos in their prime can do, who are healthy, active, fighting consistently every day. What can they do? And he set that standard for them from a very long time. And years and years have passed since where we've all just been itching, itching to see any Yonko in real combat ever since that moment. And Luffy, if we look back to Luffy and Law and their discussion when they first made the alliance in Punk Hazard, and Law tells Luffy that they are going after the four emperors and they're going to be going after Kaido, King of the Beasts. What does Luffy say to Law, if you recall in that moment? He says to him that he is going to be taking down all of the Yonko anyways, regardless. So the order doesn't matter because he's going to be coming for all of them. And what we saw from Big Mom was that she was not even, while Luffy was fighting Kaido one-on-one -on, -one on the roof and Kaido is getting all of the attention of our main character, Monkey D. Luffy, Big Mom was practically delegated to Kid and Law. And this is okay if it was a proper fight, which we'll get into later, but it wasn't. So this was also underwhelming to see that Luffy, who said he was gonna go after all of them, and also in Whole Kick Island told her he was gonna come back for her, didn't even 
have the time, so to speak, to deal with her after that. So this was very underwhelming to see from Big Mom, a Yonko who has been built up from a very long time ago, and this is what we got from her. So if we move on to number two, and this is the one that I want to talk about the most. This is the one that matters to me the most, and this is that intelligence and competency mean a lot more than you may originally think. Now, this goes for One Piece, this goes for real life, this goes for any shonen, any manga, any anime, anything. Intelligence and competency matter. You may not think so, but trust me, they do. And if we look at the other Yonko, if we look at Whitebeard, if we look at Kaido, if we look at the few things we saw from Shanks, if we look at the things we saw from Blackbeard, one thing we can all agree on is that they have all proven to be competent. They have all proven to be able to get the job done when they need to get it done. Whitebeard may not have saved Ace at Marine Ford. However, what he was able to do with such little, such little health and power was incredible. And even his own crewmates were amazed with how much he was able to do. Without him, Marine Ford wouldn't have lasted five minutes. So he proved to be extremely competent. Now, if we look at Big Mom, she is constantly getting clowned. She's getting clowned on by the Straw Hats. She's getting clowned on by, by, um, by Law and Care. She's getting clowned on by anybody. Now, any time that Big Mom wants to get something done, as long as anybody, virtually anybody, gets in her way of doing this, she is unable to accomplish this. And we see this multiple times throughout. We see this in the invasion in Whole Cake Island. We see this in, the, in um, when she attempts to climb up the waterfall to go to Wano and King pushes her down. Not only does he push her down, but he practically pushes her off a cliff and almost to her death, leaving it up to fate, not even herself. A Yonko was left up, up to fate for the water to wash her down to shore, leaving her with temporary amnesia. And if it was not for her luck in that moment, King would have killed a Yonko with one simple kick. So what does that tell you about both competency and intelligence when it comes to Big Mom? Not only this, but there was a lot more that we that we saw from her. Also, Frankie and Brooke running her over in Wano. How can that happen to a Yonko? The other straw hats like Jimbei and Robin and all of the straw hats that invaded in Whole Cake Island practically got to do whatever they wanted to do and get away with it. Now, you may be thinking, well, they didn't beat Big Mom. They didn't directly engage in combat with her. But what what does that even matter when you're able to come into her territory in front of her, keep in mind, it's not like they were avoiding her. They were in front of her for most of that final bit of Whole Cake Island. They destroyed her Mother Carmel picture. They stole back Sanji. They beat Cracker. They beat Doflamingo. They, uh, not Doflamingo, sorry, Katakuri. They beat up all of her crew. They disrespected her in front of her face. Jinbei fought with her temporarily, even. And um, we saw all of this and they were able to get away with it. Luffy disrespecting her in her face. They were able to get away with it and that is something you would not expect from a yonko where it proves that she is not competent to stop things like this happening and it is embarrassing for a yonko for stuff like this to happen and it's easy to say that this is part of her character but it's impossible to believe that she got the status and the position that she did in her life off screen up until the moment that she was introduced into the story with the traits that we then saw from her once she was introduced. It's like everybody in the story has strengths and strengths and weaknesses, but hers simply don't match up to where she is in the hierarchy of the One Piece world. And it just leaves you wondering, how did she even qualify to be in the position that she's in? It's almost like if you're, it's, it's like if someone is the CEO of your company and they've been the CEO there for 20 years. And you look at them and they've dropped out of high school. They have below average ambition. They have below average intelligence. And they are average at best with everything else with maybe one or two very strong uh, suits. You can't help but wonder, okay, how? I wanna go back and see how did they get into this position? Because what I am seeing in front of me, the skill set that I'm seeing does not match the position that they are in. And I feel like that is the exact case with Big Mom, where if we take everything we've seen of Big Mom, 
not just the bad, but we take the good that we've seen with Big Mom and the bad that we've seen with Big Mom and we put it all together because I wanna make it clear, I am not trying to bash her in this video. She is, in my opinion, in terms of physical strength, number one of all time. In terms of overall strength, she is top, top tier, one of the strongest, one of the best devil fruits, one of the best devil fruit users. If you saw my other video, I mentioned and I discussed her in that. However, with her negative traits to go along with that, and if you put it all together, I don't believe these are the these are a high enough requirement to make it to where she did off screen. So to me, this just proves it's inconsistent with what it takes to achieve the position in the first place. And that's the big problem that I have is that this is not this is not true to her title. And it's gonna if Oda were to write to show us how she got to that position with the traits that she actually has from what we've seen, it would be hard to make that convincing. So I wish we got to see more competency from her and more intelligence. She does not have to be the smartest character in the story. She does not have to be the most competent, but you cannot be as incompetent as Big Mom and achieve the possibly the highest rank in the story other than Pirate King itself. It doesn't add up and to me it is inconsistent. That is my opinion on it. So now we're gonna move into the last, but not least, final problem with Big Mom, and that is her unsatisfying and anticlimactic ending. Where do I even begin with this? So we start off, we start on the roof. 5v2, the worst generation against the two young code. Great stuff. I think everyone there was great. This is where I got into discussion about Kid, but we're not talking about that today. In terms of the Yonko, both were fantastic, Big Mom and Kaido. Now, when we get off the roof, when she gets pushed off the roof from here is where everything goes south. Everything just goes straight downhill. And one thing I wanna discuss and I wanna get into is, the problem that I have is if you're gonna make her lose, just make her lose. One of the best things about making such a strong character that has been built up for years and years and years and holds such an important rank like Yonko and has been built up since any's lobby for this, one of the best things about a character like that's downfall is if you look on the other end at the character that was able to defeat them and the incredible, incredible boost that that character can get from beating such a big and strong character. That's what storytelling is a lot of times in fighting stories. It's you're building up one character and the whole purpose of building them up is so that when said character finally takes him down, it can boost this character to such a high height. For example, Luffy beat Kaido and now everyone is saying Luffy is arguably the strongest character in One Piece. He is at the very least top top three, some say top five, but no one is saying Luffy is, is all right or Luffy's 10th or 11th or 12th. Why is that? Is that solely off of Luffy's feats? Or is that us taking in the years and the years and the years of the build up that Kaido got and understanding that with this man who has such immense portrayal and build, finally losing to Luffy, clean in my opinion, but we can get into that in a different video. When you take everything into account, in my opinion, clean, and he loses, then you then take that you take that immense hype and you transfer it on to the to the to the person that was able to take him down. That's the case. That's how it always goes. And with this, unfortunately, with this fight, we cannot give that full credit to Law and Kid, which is a major issue because if we look at Big Mom, she is the first fully healthy, fully active, healthy Yonko to fight and, and lose and have an official loss in One Piece. Whitebeard was an entirely different story. He was old, he was sick, it was a war. It was called the War of the Best because all the top tiers were there. This was the first time we got to see a truly giant, a true giant and a Yonko in their full and epic glory fall and lose. And it was extremely, extremely, extremely unsatisfying because the way I saw it, all we got was excuses to why she lost as opposed to highlights from Law and Kid to make her lose. For example, the nukes, the nuclear bombs at the end or whatever they were, she grabs onto those, they explode. There's an excuse for why she lost. She fell, she, did, she didn't fall down on her back, boom, defeated, 
hands out wide, that Do Flamingo and Crocodile famous pose when they're just laying down flat. We didn't get that. I think personally, for for such a long time of hyping up the Yonko, the first one to fall should have gotten that. Just so we can finally sink in that moment where it's like you're waiting all these years and you don't really get what you've been waiting for. You kind of get it, but you kind of not. But there's a hole, there's the bombs, there's the 2v1. And that's just one portion of it. The whole other portion is, again, this was the first time I gotta emphasize this because this is huge. This is the first time we saw a fully healthy Yonko fall in the story of One Piece that has been about the Yonko and being obstacles in Luffy's path. And what did we see? We saw no flashback. We saw no advanced Conqueror's Hockey. We saw no Devil Fruit Awakening. And we saw virtually all, if not all, almost all of her offense be off screen. You can't tell me this is not unsatisfying. You don't even have to be a Big Mom fan to claim to understand this is unsatisfying. You could be a Law and Kid fan and know that this is unsatisfying. Whatever, whatever lens you're looking through, this is extremely unsatisfying after years and years and years of build of building up. And for me, this was disappointing. It was just too many excuses, too many variables. I wish it was a more clean loss. Otherwise, what's the point in even making it a 2v1? Where if it was a clean loss, even if those two guys fought her for much longer or they were in worse condition afterwards, at least now we can look at them and put onto them the same hype that we would put onto Luffy. Not saying that they would be at Luffy's level, but we would be able to transfer the hype of Big Mom and put all of it, split it between those two. Whereas now we can't even do that because some of the credit goes to Kid, some goes to Law, some goes to the Bombs, some go to Gravity, some go to her just being stupid, some go to her being incompetent, some people say she lost to herself, and it's just, it's it's unsatisfying and it's anticlimactic because, because if this was the finish that she was going to get, it should have been sooner. It should have definitely been sooner in my opinion. And why make her loss unclear? Because if she's gone forever now, then it was unclear. Like for example, with Kaido, when when Kaido lost, some people may have their issues with it, I have my issues with it, but at least we got somewhat of a flashback and we got a clear loss. Like we know Kaido lost and we know that whether or not he's dead, whether or not we see him again in the story, we know that basically his role in the story is finished. His main role in the story is finished with that bar Barjon gun. And we saw a little bit of flashback and Oda made it clear to us that Kaido's role is now complete. Thanks for watching that. With Big Mom, this is not the case whatsoever. With Big Mom, it's open for a lot of speculation that she may come back. Is she gonna come back in the final war? Is she never gonna come back? So we have to look at this from two ways now. First, if she doesn't come back, if she doesn't come back, then that was the last of her. And if that was the last of her, why not make the loss clear because she's gone anyways. And now you have Kid and Law who are heavily focused characters and are for the future of the story. So I can't imagine how important they will be in the next three years of One Piece. So why not focus more on them and give them a clear win over Big Mom? I think if it's done right, it can be believable that the two of them, once their Devil Fruit were, awa were awakened, can beat Big Mom clean and clear and have her not fall down, no bombs, just laying down right in front of those two, completely and utterly defeated. That would have been so much more helpful to the story moving forward than what we got. Now, if we look at it the other way, okay, she's not gone forever. What if she comes back and that's why it was an unclear finish? Sure, let's look at it from this perspective. There's only one time I see it that she can come back and that is the final war. And by the final war, the worst, the worst generation members, Luffy, Law, Kids, or whoever, just the future guys, Kobe, we're at the end game now where even just the smallest power-ups are gonna be such a big boost because we need to skyrocket now to finally reach those levels where Luffy has to really become the strongest of all time in the next two or three years of real life, which is very small time in the story. So they're gonna skyrocket now in terms of power. Kind of like how Luffy practically five times his overall power in Wano alone. So 
if Big Mom comes back in the final war as the same monster that she's seen as now, she won't be seen as a monster then. At best, at best, she'll be seen as average compared to these other guys. And realistically, she'll be seen as below average for how strong I think Zoro will be able to defeat her. Not even extreme difficulty at that point if she comes back. So you're only going to leave a major stain on her character by bringing her back that way. And she's only going to lose again to whoever it is really soon anyways. And then her character is gone once again, but with such a nasty stain that that's what she's going to be remembered for. So there's really no point in doing that. So anyway, you look at it, whether she comes back into the story or whether she does not come back. I personally believe, in my humble opinion, this was the wrong way to go about her downfall because you only had four original Yonko in this story. You only had four that were being built up since Eni's Lobby, four that have been built up for over a decade now. And the first one to fall properly, aside from Whitebeard, you could have done so much with and you could have helped make Law and Kids so much better in terms of portrayal but in my opinion I feel like that was lost and I feel like it didn't really help her lot my main issue if I could put it as simply as possible is her loss didn't help anybody it didn't help her it didn't protect her or her image it didn't make law look any good it didn't make kid look any good as opposed to like what it should have made them look like and it didn't even help the story in the way that it was done and that's my personal opinion so those are the three problems that I have personally with Big Mom. I hope I explain them as clearly as I possibly can. If you guys do disagree, please by all means comment down below what you what you disagreed with and we can have a, a discussion about this because I know this is all subjective, this is all opinion based. Practically everything we talk about is in one piece when it comes to power scaling or analysis or stuff like this. But comment down below what you disagreed with or if you agreed with it, comment down below what you agreed with. If you are new and you just found this channel, please subscribe to the channel because I upload content like this twice, sometimes three times a week, and you can be sure you'll find more content like this. If you guys like the video, please leave a like, share the video, help my channel grow. It is a new channel, and I'll have a new video out for you guys soon. Thanks guys and take care.